there are a lot, a lot of heated debates that come up around the topic of moral and ethics. And a lot of people think that they're very cut and dry. So when we look at people like Steve Rogers, AKA Captain America, as well as Tony Stark, AKA Iron Man, we can see how they have a separate set of morals, but coming together with similar ethical values, they can get back together and help defeat Thanos in Endgame. And there's a lot of lessons that we can learn from this. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about mental health and sometimes I like to take different topics from pop culture to try to teach you how to improve your mental and emotional well-being. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. So a couple things real quick. Um, I wrote another blog post this morning. It'll be linked down in the description as well as in the pinned comment. If you wanna check that out, I kind of threw back to the Civil War. I'm gonna touch on some things in this video from that blog post, but if you wanna get more of a, a, an outlook on the Civil War aspect of it between their different morals between Captain America and uh, Iron Man, go check that blog post out. Second thing is, I freaking love superhero movies. I love the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And I'm going to be doing a lot of character breakdowns and mental health topics going into the Avengers Endgame, okay? So if you're not uh, uh, an Avengers fan, bear with me. I'm gonna be covering a lot of really important topics. So just, just watch, learn a little bit about the Avengers as well as learn a little bit about mental health. And if you have any topics that you think might be interesting moving forward, let me know down in the comments. Things such as survivor's guilt, right? Like we're looking, going into Endgame with, with the surviving Avengers, trying to avenge the fallen Avengers and things like that. There's also some relationships, you know, between uh, Tony Stark and Peter Parker and that kind of relationship. Uh, I wanna talk about Black Widow, all sorts of stuff, all right? But if you have any topics that you want me to cover, let me know down in the comments below, okay? So anyways, let's talk about morals and ethics, okay? This is so important, so, so, so important, especially with some of the things going on around the topic of mental health on YouTube. Like, there's so many things where I see people saying, this is ethical, this isn't ethical, that's not ethical, that's not moral, da, 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 da. And one of the things I struggle with is a lot of people believe that these things are very cut and dry, and, and they're not, all right? They, they are often, like, our set of morals are often formed based on our own experiences, um, our life choices, our own personal values. Like they vary from person to person. Some examples I wanna give you before jumping into the topic of the Avengers is like, think about these topics, all right? Sex workers, okay? Some people might find that immoral. Um, veganism and vegetarianism. Think about what those people find moral and immoral, okay? Then look at the topic of polyamory, okay? Someone who's monogamous might find polyamory immoral. So like, I want you to just kind of broaden your mind and open it up just for a minute to realize that these things aren't so cut and dry as they seem. So in the Avengers Endgame, and we saw it in the Avengers Infinity War, we saw, um, Steve Rogers and Tony Stark come back together, okay? They they <laughs> they got into it a little bit in the Civil War. So let's talk about why that is, all right? You could say that, you know, Steve Rogers and Tony Stark had different sets of morals, and we can look towards philosophy for this, too. Philosophy covers a lot in the realm of morals and ethics. So I'm reading a, an amazing book right now. It's actually called, like, The Avengers and Philosophy. I love it so much. They kind of do what I do, where they take pop culture to teach a lesson. Absolutely loving it. So anyways, you have Steve Rogers. Steve Rogers follows a philosophy of deontology, okay? What is right is right. Do the right thing no matter what, have your set of right things to do and do those things, okay? That's one of the issues that Steve Rogers had with Tony Stark. So Tony Stark, his moral philosophy is something of utilitarianism, okay? This is more an idea of logic. So a, a great way to kind of explain these two different types of moral philosophies, deontology is looking at right versus wrong, okay? Where utilitarianism is better or worse. So somebody like Tony Stark in the Civil War, and I explained this more in depth in the blog post, he was looking at this, okay, based on the circumstances, this is the best possible outcome. So people who have that kind of utilitarianist um, moral philosophy, 
they are looking for net net positive, okay? Like this is best case scenario. We need to do this based on the best case scenario. Somebody like Steve Rogers, who stands firmly in his ideals, he's not going to waver, all right? I, another way to kind of look at this is a philosophical thought experiment. All right, so let's say that you are on a runaway, uh, a runaway trolley, okay? And if that trolley stays on the track, there is a group of people on that track, and if it stays on that track, boom, it's gonna hit them, kill them all, okay? Now, you have a choice. There is a lever that you can pull. This is the only thing you can do, so you can't get off the trolley or anything like that, nothing crazy. The only choice you have is to pull that lever. And if you pull that lever, the trolley will switch tracks and it will kill one person standing on those tracks, okay? So which one would you choose? Okay, think about that for a second. Maybe leave the comments down below. Would you let the trolley go and run over a group of people or would you make the decision to pull that lever and hit that one person, okay? So when looking at Tony Stark versus Steve Rogers, we could probably say that Tony Stark would pull that lever. Steve Rogers probably wouldn't pull that lever because he would have to make the conscious decision which would kill people, okay? He would make that conscious decision. So this is something where these two, these two differ. Now, I don't know, I've never had these two do a thought experiment because they're fictional characters, all right? But that's where these two butt heads. Now, when Thanos comes into play in the Infinity War, how do morals come into play there, okay? So something that's always fascinated me is that everybody is the hero of their own story, all right? Like, if you think about it, nobody, nobody does what they think is wrong. Right? Everybody does something thinking that they're the hero. So when you look at Thanos and what he's trying to accomplish, throughout the Infinity War, he's trying to get these dang Infinity Stones so he can wipe out half of the universe's population, okay? He believes that that is the best thing possible since they're struggling with overpopulation. So he needs to wipe, wipe out half of the population. So you might think, okay, well, does, Thanos have a utilitarian point of view where he's looking at best case scenario, like even though you have to sacrifice half of the population, let's do this. And now if we look at it like that, does Iron Man have that same view? When you think about that, well, if Iron Man is utilitarian as well, why didn't he agree with what Thanos is doing? And this is where we can look at Tony Stark and Steve Rogers coming back together to defeat Thanos. Because I would argue that although Tony Stark has a utilitarian philosophy of morals, he's looking at that and the ends don't justify the means, all right? So the means would be wiping out half the population in order to save you know, the rest of the population. He doesn't believe that that's justified. And I would I would think, you know, somebody like Tony Stark, who, you know, has, has taken his intelligence and his inventions to try to better mankind, I would imagine somebody like Tony Stark would do the best he possibly could to try to come up with new resources, to, you know, try um, looking to see if life can be sustained on other planets. So that's where he disagrees with Thanos. And that brings up the ethics of the Avengers and how Tony and Steve were able to come back together. Because the difference between morals and ethics is morals is like your personal system that you follow, right? Ethics are more of a set of rules, okay? And the Avengers, when you have all these different personalities coming together, it's hard for them to have a set of rules, you know what I mean? Even though, you know, Iron Man and Captain America are two of the figureheads, they're gonna have some differences, but they're coming together to defeat Thanos. So what does this mean for all of you? When it comes to mental health, one of the biggest things is we get so furious with people who disagree with us. We get so upset when people disagree with us and we get so selfish and self-centered in our thinking, we think our way is the only way, this is right, this is wrong. And the reason why I say, I say it's selfish and self-centered is because we completely neglect another person's experience or reality. And my personal, my personal opinion and outlook on this is like, <laughs> it's explained in the blog post, okay? Go check that out because I don't wanna get into that too much here. But I'll go back to the original topics I gave you, okay? So let's go back to sex workers, all right? There are many people who think that's immoral. 
They think that this is immoral, you shouldn't be doing that, right? But for a sex worker, that's 100% moral, okay? Then you get vegans and vegetarians, all right? I'm vegetarian, but I'm not like one of those like moral high ground vegetarians, but vegans and vegetarians sometimes think that any meat eater is being immoral. But there are meat eaters who believe what they're doing is moral. You see what I mean? And then you get into the whole dispute of vegans versus vegetarians because vegetarians, like myself, still eat dairy products, right? Still eat eggs and things like that. And then you look at the subject of polyamory versus monogamy. There are people who think it's morally incorrect to be polyamorous. You should be with one person, that's it, no polyamory, and they're against like open relationships and all those things. But in all of these scenarios, who's right and who's wrong? Like, is it hurting anybody? Like, what's the net gain out of it, right? In some of these situations, like, it's it's overall happiness that you're looking for. That's kind of what utilitarians look at is overall happiness. What's gonna satisfy the greater good? You know what I mean? Let's look at gay marriage. There are certain people who think that's immoral. Who's right, who's wrong? Now, I know you have your own beliefs on these things, but is it fair to really say that this person is immoral because they were raised a certain way, because they follow a certain religion, you know, and things like that. And I, I understand that in an honest debate, people can make cases for these things, but that's why I encourage debates rather than arguments. And that's why I think this really affects our mental health. I feel that we live in a time where people no longer debate, they just argue and they fight and they get pissed off when someone disagrees with them. It's my way or the highway. And, and I think that's one of the reasons why so many things like politics are just so polarizing, you know what I mean? And, and at the end of the day, people just have different paths that they wanna take to reach the same goal, which is overall happiness and you know the betterment of mankind. So I just want you to think about that. I want you to think if you're stuck in your morals and your, in your value system, where you don't even open your mind to another point of view to have a calm conversation, is that affecting your mental health? All right, like I want you to think about that stuff. But anyways, like I said, leave comments down below. Let me know your thoughts on this topic. Let me know any suggestions you have for mental health topics going into the Avengers Endgame. Like I said, I have a bunch of ideas. I'll put them down in the description below. You can take a look at them and then come up with more ideas. All right, but anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You're all amazing. And if you would like to sign up and become a patron, you can click or tap right there, all right? Thanks again so much for watching. I'll see you next time.